So this is my model, Taya G. Her IG will be down below on the screen. So we're starting off with skin prep. I'm going to be taking some witch hazel on a cotton pad and wiping that all over her face just to remove any excess oils or dirt that is on her skin so we can start off with a clean face. Next is moisturizer. You want to make sure the skin is nice and moisturized because we are going to be using a lot of products and powders. So we want to make sure that her skin isn't dry. So I'm just taking that on a brush and applying that all over her skin. And I'm using the Emberlease moisturizer it is a very good lightweight moisturizer that gives the skin a glow but isn't too heavy on the skin And I'm also taking a Real Techniques Beauty Sponge and just pressing in that moisturizer. For primer, I'll be using the Becca Backlight Priming Filter. And I'm applying this on the high points of her cheeks, her chin, and this also will add moisture and this is what the makeup will sit on top of. For foundation, I am using the NARS Radiant Long Wear uh, foundation in the shade Namibia. And I mixed in the Fit Me by Maybelline foundation and Espresso. I do a lot of mixing when applying foundations. You just have to look at the undertones and, and look at what you have and see what will mesh well with the person's skin tone. But I will be having a shade matching course coming out as well, so stay tuned for that. So I like to start off by applying the foundation on the forehead and outlining the top of the brows with the foundation. And now I'm also just applying the rest of our foundation on the rest of her face. This is just to apply the foundation and then I will take a brush and then blend it in. So I'm taking my Real Techniques Instapot Face Brush. I'm taking that brush and pressing that foundation in. I don't use swiping motions. I literally go back and forth in, in small sections and press that foundation into the skin. And it gives it a, a flawless, full coverage look. So that's all I am doing here, making sure I have blended that foundation all the way into her skin. Now it is time to highlight the face. I am taking the Too Faced Born This Way Concealer in Toffee and I'm mixing in a little bit of that foundation as well just to darken it just a tad on the outer parts of her face that I'm using this on. And then I'm just gonna go in with Toffee by itself in the inner corner. So you always want to have the inner corner be the brightest part of the face. 
and then the outer portion of the highlight to be a little bit darker so that it will blend with the foundation. So I'm taking this under her eyes, top of her lip, her chin, the bridge of her nose, and her forehead. These are the areas that I am going to highlight. This is where the light hits the face the most. Typically, I won't use this much on everyone, but because she has a lot of... Uh, I guess you could say a wider face shape I am able to use a little bit more concealer and I'm also dropping a course on how to um, highlight and contour and shape different face uh, types as well I do like to allow my concealer to dry down before I blend it out because it just gives a fuller coverage so I like to multitask on my faces and this also helps me be more efficient and save time I am going to go ahead and fill in her brows. I'm using the I'm using the Morphe Micro Brow Pencil in the shade Java, and I'm just taking um, that pencil and just doing hair like strokes. Uh, I really like a nice, soft, natural brow, so I make sure I get a good line underneath to shape her brow, and then I just do hair like strokes to fill in. And make sure you're using light pressure because you don't want it to get too dark. So always use light pressure when filling in the brow. And um, if you ever get, if the brows ever get too dark, you can just use the spoolie to fade them out. And then I also went in with my LA Girl, actually an eye pencil in brown, just to give it a little more color instead of it being so dark, just to shape that brow a little bit more. Now I am taking my LA Girl concealer in fawn to conceal her brows i really like to use this concealer so i'm taking this flat it's a flat brush on the side and i just allow the brush to guide me and make sure that my you see my pinky is resting on her face however you are comfortable you want to make sure that your hand is nice and steady and you just literally guide that brush along the brow and allow the brush to do the work for you Now I am going to blend out this concealer. I'm taking that same foundation brush to blend out the edges because it has some of that excess um, product on it. It will help it mesh with the foundation. And I'm blending out the chin, the forehead, and the edges of the concealer with this. And like I said before, always use padding motions. You don't want to swipe. Now I'm taking my Real Technique sponge and blending uh, her under eye, making sure I get in those creases. Always have your clients look up so you can press all that product in and they won't create any creasing. Now I am just taking a brush to blend in that um, concealer on her lid. This is also going to be her eyeshadow base. So that's why I wanted a concealer that was just a little bit brighter. The brighter the eyeshadow base, the more pigmented your colors will come out.
So now I am taking another concealer, the Tarte Shape Tape in Tan Sand, just to give her a bright under eye effect. And as you see, I'm not using as much because I don't want it to overpower, but I'm using just enough to um, give the effect. Blending out with your sponge, you want to use light tapping motions um, so the sponge doesn't absorb that much product and you get that fuller coverage that you're looking for. So now it is time to set the concealer and I'm just taking that sponge and I have some of my Laura Mercier translucent honey powder and I'm just pressing that in. Like I said, you want to have your clients look up, make sure all of the creases underneath the eyes are blended out before you apply the powder because if you set it while it still has creases, then it's all it's going to do is just set the crease and the creases will still appear. Uh, under the eye so you want to prevent as much as that as possible so I'm just pressing this powder into the skin I don't really bake I like uh, a nice airbrush look so I uh, apply the powder and make sure I press it all the way into the skin this helps lock in that concealer and help it to stay in place and give you that mattified look And I wanted a little bit more of a yellow tint, so I went in with some of my Sasha Buttercup and went over top of that powder and um, let that sit a little bit, and then I uh, pressed that in as well. The only area that I tend to leave powder is the nose because I want it to be intensified um, when I contour. To contour, I am using the Morphe Face Palette in Deep Glam, and I am using the first bronzer shade and the first contour shade in that palette. Mix those together, and I'm placing that in the hollows of her cheeks. I really like a warm, bronzed look, and this is a bronze glam makeup tutorial, so you should expect it. But um, I'm just taking that in the hollows of her cheeks using padding motions as well, because that part of the face is still kind of wet so you don't want to swipe because it will create um kind of like streaks and it'll make the face look really muddy so you want to make sure you press that powder on to mattify the area and then after that then you'll be able to go in and swipe and now it's time to conceal her nose i'm doing the same thing here i am taking um one of my morphe brushes everything that i'm using will be linked so no worries on that part um, and I'm just taking that since it is a small angle brush and going down the sides of her nose 
and just using that powder to be my guide as to where um, I should place the contour. Now I'm going um, into blush. This is from that Morphe palette as well. And I'm using both of the blush shades and just patting that on the apples of her cheeks. I wanted her nose to be just a little more snatched, so I did go ahead and apply some of that powder on the sides of her nose just to snatch and give the aesthetics. And while I'm letting that sit, like I told y'all, I like to multitask on faces while I'm letting that sit. I am lining her lips with the Morphe Lip Liner in Chin Setter. It's a very um, warm brown shade. It's like a, it has a hint of red in it. So I really like it on brown skins, uh, brown skin tones and deep skin tones. Um, and for lips, I am using the Infallible Liquid Lipstick in Sweet Tooth. And I'm just applying that in the center of her lips. I'm going to have her blot her lips together to help with the blending process. And then I'm going to take a clean lip brush and just blend in those edges. For lip gloss, I am using the NYX Butter Gloss in Fortune Cookie to give her that bright pinky nude shade. For eyeshadow, I'm actually using that same Morphe face palette. I'm using those contour shades and mixing those together to give her that bronze look. And this also will help it tie into her contour as well. So the shades will kind of like mesh with each other. But the eyeshadow is really simple. I'm just patting that all over her eye and making sure that I blend it in. I did take that red shade in the crease at first, blend that in, and then in the center part of her eye, I went in with like a darker brown to give it a smoky effect. So now I'm just taking a light fluffy brush and I am dusting away that excess powder that was on her nose. And y'all see how it already just snatched the nose. You know what I'm saying? Just snatched it. So I like to do a little uh, shimmer on the lids. So I'm taking my matte shimmers and just placing that on her inner corner. Now I'm taking a gel liner. I used the Inglot gel liner. I went ahead and applied her lashes off camera and did her waterline off camera. This is the final look. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Be sure to share this on IG. Um, recommend this to your friends and family. I thank you guys for tuning in and I will see y'all in the next class. Bye.